Hello and welcome to Film Slam Streams Post Film Conversation for Gordex. My name is Eric Seiler and I'm an instructor of film, media arts, and communication, as well as moderator for this conversation. We are very pleased to be joined by the director of Gordex, Malik Ever. Malik is a trans, non-binary, queer, and first-generation Algerian-American filmmaker. Um, his film has um, been highly acclaimed and has won um, numerous awards. He spends, has spent time working in the um, uh, queer community, and he's an advocate of that. He has numerous honors and awards for working with his films. Hello, Malik, and welcome. Hi, how you doing? I'm doing great. It's so good to have you here. I'm so glad you brought this film um, to us. It's a really delightful film. Um, I understand, um, I know we talked before the interview that um, it was inspired by some true events. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, um, I mean, shout out to my writer, Liz Vasquez. Um, they're really talented uh, an amazing, amazing writer and artist and filmmaker. Um, this is based off of, Gordy X is based off of their um, childhood experience of uh, their own father working at a country club summer camp and being um, the only kid who had a parent who was a server working at the, at the camp or at the country club and, um, and the only brown kid and just like pretending to play dead uh, to to get attention that was the the spark of the whole um movie they pitched it to me and i just thought it was a, a great idea so they pitched it to you in terms of making a film knowing that you were a filmmaker or just casual conversation uh no they pitched it to me um with the intention of me me directing it and working on it with them um this is we made it as our thesis film for our grad our grad school program. Okay. Well, great. So with that in mind, all right, had this idea, you gotta put this together. Ursula, how did you find her? <laughs> um <laughs> we had we had, well, we had a casting director that just kind of posted everywhere. And Mila um Mila like I think last minute applied. Mm -hmm. um had never been in a movie before uh and I I think I saw her face and was like she might be she might be a good fit and then she was just like a brilliant brilliant uh brilliant actor she was she like was way ahead of uh of answering of like character development stuff and just like knew it was asking questions um and and fit the role perfectly yeah <laughs> she really did fit the role so as a um working on this film as a thesis you had to i guess get a lot of favors and ask people to help and so forth to try to really make this a collaborative project um how long did it take for you to actually make this film um we were working on it for about a year i think yeah, about a year. Um, but that was also the timeline that we had um, with our school and like delivery date. Um, maybe a little bit over a year, but I say we're still working on it. <laughs> Just yeah, so tell us about that. What do you mean you're still working on it? How so? Ah, uh, because it's still, it's still, you know, we're going to festivals. We're like answering questions about it. It, it's, it's like still something that is very much so in, in um all of our lives, uh, and it doesn't feel quite, quite dead. Yeah. Okay. Now the production process itself. I know you worked on for a year. How long was the shoot? Our shoot was six days. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And did you shoot it in LA or? We shot it in LA. Um, we were at a different location every day, <laughs> which was a, a, a an experience experience to have. Right. I see. In terms of um, editing, you spent how long did you spend editing the film? Um, editing the film, I feel like Stanley edited the film. We we edited it in like a month, 
about mm -hmm. a month um, of editing before we picture locked. And then we went into, it took another month uh, to two months to finish all of the sound, the mixing and the music composition and um, all that stuff, coloring. Yeah. Now that this film has gone through festival circuit and you've seen it more times than you can count, <laughs> uh, what are your feelings now towards it as opposed to when you first got it completed? Do you wish you had done anything differently? I mean, I think there's always moments of uh, of like being like, ah, oh, like maybe maybe I should have gotten that one shot. But in all honesty, I. Um, I'm really proud of it. I think I never aim to make something, uh, completely perfect because I think perfectionism can be a little, um, controlling and, and doesn't allow for, I don't know, for like mistakes, I think allow for, for creative fun and, um, and development you know in ways that you didn't expect so I think all things considered I, I like fall in and out of love with with it I think that's natural with the project but for the most part I've been very in love uh with it and honestly just proud of my creative team and the fact that we um could accomplish that together do you see this film um uh as fitting into like the um, LGBTQ plus IA category, or do you just want this to be seen as a um, film that can be enjoyed by anyone and not be put into a category? Um, I think both. You know, I I think not having it be a queer trans film um, is erasure of queer and trans identities and and like should be recognized but also i don't think you need to be queer or trans to enjoy right. the movie yeah it, it, exactly and that's one thing that's remarkable about the film it should be it's enjoyed by everyone i mean the, the, and having children the way you displayed the um, children in the film created that sense of innocence um you know and, and child like not trying to be too grown or too young and so forth and it's believable things like that can happen. Uh, well, to tell me a little bit about um, the buy-in for this film, um, people who are watching this might think of making a film um, around the subject matter and may be afraid of the buy-in and inclusive and knowing that everyone isn't open-minded. Tell us a little bit about how you did that. Um, I mean, I think as an artist, first and foremost you just sort of you kind of have to just make what you want to make um i think being concerned about what other people think or are going to perceive your film as uh limits your capacity for creativity and i mean when it comes to like when we're talking about oh sorry that's my dog um <laughs> <laughs> trans uh film making uh, or even just existence i i really um and also black and brown people you know being first gen i i just i i don't i'm at a point in my creativity in my life where i don't feel like i need to prove myself um to anyone but myself you know um and i think that's important in our story making and our storytelling um to just make what we want to make so that it's authentic instead of convincing someone to like us. Exactly. I know you couldn't convince everyone. Um, how did you deal with um, any resistance or did you have any resistance? Uh, not particularly. I mean, our, our uh, you know, if someone <laughs> was transphobic or or racist, like they weren't, we weren't allowing them on our set and our school was like really supportive um, of the whole process and the story. People were really excited. So not, not particularly, there wasn't m m like much resistance for it. 
That's that's good to hear. That really is. It shows how um, society has been advancing. Um, you know, especially in a film like this, where you have children in the film, some parents aren't so open. Say, "Oh no, I don't want my child to be part of this," and so forth. But um, it's just done in such an innocent manner and displayed in which you just had to help, uh, couldn't help but like it. Um, speaking of liking it, tell us about some of the response you received from this film. Um, it's been great. People have loved it. It's really spoken to people. Um, a lot of, uh, we've had a lot of people come up to us and be like, I was Ursula as a kid, um, you know, and I needed, I needed to see myself represented that way. Um, and, uh, it's, it's been a positive experience. Um, other people have just been like thrilled thrilled that they you know get to see again not a story that's violent or um you know mean or traumatic in any capacity um in terms of representation um and that's really spoken to people right and, and i i can see that too and um what the um... Ursula, the character of Ursula, I know you mentioned she has never acted before, and I guess she did a fine job. Is she? Do you know? Do you keep in touch with her? Is she? Has she continued acting? Yeah, yeah. Mila's still acting. Honestly, people should hire her. She's a star. <laughs> um, yeah, she's still taking acting class. I mean, she's she's also she's a kid, so she's in school as well. Right, exactly. But it's just great that she can have a role like this and see herself on the screen. And um, you know, you know, as a filmmaker, um, there's this um a sense of um image, you know, that filmmakers like to create of what a leading character should look like. And Ursula doesn't fall into like some of the stereotypical leading characters. I just love that you cast someone like her a person of color you know and you know doesn't have that you know look that we are used to seeing so that was very deliberate wasn't it yeah 100 percent deliberate yeah i mean that's uh i mean liz and i are on the same page we just really um think that uh everyone deserves representation it's so important and also that um with you know queer and trans black and brown communities um just like we're communities that deserve laughter and joy and whimsy and um representation regardless of you know anything so that was the point it was all deliberate <laughs> Great, great, exactly. That's what I thought. So after someone sees this film, what do you want people to say about the film? Do you want people to say, oh, that was such a delightful film, reminded me of my childhood, or do you want people to connect with representation or a little bit of both? What do you what would you like people to say after seeing your film? I think I'd love for people to say what a what a funny heartfelt movie. <laughs> um and also yeah i mean if it speaks to them on that on either of those levels uh like i would be delighted as well um but uh for the most part i want i just want people to walk away you know thinking about it um and and having had a good time watching it right it, exactly well great you can ad address um on both sides of it. Um, as we are, are wrapping up here, um, what's next for you? What do you have um, on, in the pipeline in terms of filmmaking? Um, I have a couple of short films I'm gonna make and then I'm working working on a feature, uh, my first feature, getting that off the ground right now. So um, okay. we'll see. Are you able to say a little bit about it or you just wanna keep it under wraps until it's time um i mean uh, <laughs> you don't have to say anything um, <laughs> it's it's a work it's a work in progress but uh 
it's called gut bucket um it's about uh, uh a trans man uh in his uh 50s whose um mother uh a strange mother passes away and he returns home to clean out his childhood house and starts um discovering his mom's secrets and also that the the house can talk to him so that's my feature we'll see sounds very intriguing very interesting not just uh, because of representation, but just the story itself sounds very in intriguing as well. I'm so glad that you're um, um, being true to yourself as a filmmaker. And, um, you know, and it's really great. And I appreciate the advice and information you've been giving out today about, you know, you know, stick to what you, um, your, your, what you believe in and put it out there on the screen. Um, anything else you want to add about the film before I uh, let you go? Anything else you want us to know? Um, no, I just, uh, I guess, I mean, really, I made, I directed the movie, but I really could not have made it without my creative team, my editor, my production designer, my producer, um, writer, and cinematographer. They really pulled through. Um, so, uh, I'm like not right now being the face, but it really was a team team effort. Exactly. Yeah, but there's so much involved. Getting location, the swimming pool, you know, and um, yeah. you know, I don't know if you taught the character Ursula how to golf at all or anything at all, but <laughs> details that you had to concern yourself with. Oh, one last question I do want to ask you. Oh, we have time. Yeah, we have a. a, a short minute left or two. Um, the uh, opening scene with her in the pool, was that actually Ursula there? And how did you-, you mean the, the very, very, very beginning before we see yes, her? Yes, her playing dead. Oh, you caught it. It's uh, it's Liz. It's it's my, our screenwriter, Liz. It's oh, okay. Their, their body in the, in the, um, in the pool. It's, it was a very, it was a very cute, sweet moment. Uh, cause they both were in the pool together. Um, yeah. Mila, Mila was, was, uh, uh, is perfect for the role and, and, but had like a little bit of a fear of water. And we, once Liz was in the pool with her, it went away. It was great. In the same bathing suit. <laughs> exactly. What well, nicely done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's nice. It's always interesting talking to filmmakers, learn the little secrets of, um, you know, how they tell the story. So um, uh, Malik Evers, director of Gordex, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, congratulations on all your successes. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. And thank you to our audience for joining us for this important and invigorating conversation. For more information about our upcoming film festival, please visit us at clevelandfilm.org. I'm Eric Seiler. Thank you.